Blessed is our God, Trinity of love, and blessed is the dominion of our God now and ever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Uh, welcome to you all to our service of worship today. Uh, good to have you with us. We... The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We claim this time for the worship of God. May God gather us from the four corners of the earth, uniting us as one body in Christ as we lift our voices in praise.
Jesus Christ is the light of the world. A light the darkness can extinguish. Since we live as people of the light, in faith, hope and love, let us pray to the Lord. Into your communion, Lord, gather all creation. Joining our voices with the deep groans of creation and with the cries of the men that rise from a world in travail, aching for redemption, let us pray to the Lord. Into your communion, Lord, gather all creation. The traditional custodians of this land, the Boomerang and Wurundjeri peoples, with all whose lands have been colonised, and cultures and languages decimated, and with all whose blood cries out from the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Into your communion, Lord, gather all creation. Con todos aquellos que soportan las heridas de un mundo corrupto y anhelan curación y la renovación, recemos al Señor. Into your communion, Lord, gather all creation. With all who suffer with Christ under the weight of the sin of the world, those subjected to injustice and deprivation, those seeking, seeking refuge, freedom and peace, and especially with many peoples in Africa, drastically affected by wars and famines, let us pray to the Lord. Into your communion, Lord, gather all creation. 全世界的老人,孩子和体弱的人,所有需要帮助的人,让我们一起向神祷告。Into your communion, Lord, gather all creation. Lord, who serve the earth and its inhabitants, with leaders, policymakers, activists, with workers, students, artists and storytellers, and especially this week with Jeff, as he works with Joey to organise an English conversation group with the theological students in Timor. Let us pray to the Lord. Into your communion, Lord, gather all creation. With each one gathered here in prayer, with our absent friends, with our neighbours at the Uniting Aboriginal and Island of Christian Congress, and with the whole of Christ Church, from the banks of the Birarong to the ends of the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Into your communion, Lord, gather all creation. With God's faithful servants of every time and place, all our mothers and fathers among the saints who inspire us, guide us and encourage us, and especially this week with the Indigenous leaders who have shown us all the way of Jesus, with Ellen and Edwin Atkinson, David Uniapon, William Cooper, Don and Eileen Brady, Mum Sherl Smith, Doug and Gladys Nichols, and Lawitya O'Donoghue. Let us pray to the Lord. Into your communion, Lord, gather all creation. We do when they do here. Who we want her now? With them and the cloud of witnesses, plus people who end up by who believe they then will get up again. Make we pray to God. Into your communion, Lord, gather all creation. Blessed are you, God of all creation, and blessed is the communion into which you gather us. You promised through your beloved Son, when two or three gather together in his name, you will be there in the midst of them. 
Send your Holy Spirit to call us by name and lead us home. We come defeated, we come dancing, we come traumatized, we come trusting, we come aggrieved, we come adoring. Send your Holy Spirit to call us by name and lead us home. We come because our hearts are made restless by echoes of a song we've never heard and memories of a place we've never seen. Send your Holy Spirit to call us by name and lead us home. The Lord says, If you would enter the gates of my holy city and eat from the tree of life, turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. For those who sow injustice wreak disaster, but the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy and peace. O oh God, you have searched us and you know us. All that we are is open to you. We confess that we are entangled in sin in your mercy, heal us and set us free. When we use our power to dominate and our weakness to manipulate, Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord. When we evade responsibility and fail to confront evil. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. When we are seduced by fashionable dreams, and pursue our desires at the expense of others. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. When we despair of changing the world and neglect to change even ourselves, Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. When we fail to integrate spirit and flesh and forfeit the wholeness you intend for us. Lord, have mercy, Christ. We turn to you, O God of infinite mercy. We renounce evil. We claim your love. We choose to be made whole. In Jesus Christ, we have redemption and the forgiveness of our sins. For in the richness of his grace, Christ determined to save us even at the cost of his own lifeblood. To each and every one of you, I declare your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. 
exprimons notre reconnaissance au Père qui nous a rendus capables de prendre part à l'héritage des saints dans la lumière, nous délivrant de la puissance des ténèbres et nous transportant dans le royaume de son Fils bien-aimé en qui nous sommes rachetés, pardonnés de nos péchés. No matter how the bread we get, we still suppose follow it in Baba God, the Anderson. As we be so, make we get sense of Baba God, Lord. Make we be careful, no good draft for me, who still suppose save us. Lord, to whom shall we go? Yours are the words of eternal life. O oh Lord, your mysteries discerned in wisdom by prayerful people through the centuries have been etched in sacred places and recorded in holy books. Send your Holy Spirit upon us, that your word may take root in the sacred places of our hearts and may our truth to your glory. A reading from the second book of Samuel. Let us listen for the word of God. David called up 30,000 top soldiers, the cream of Israel's army, and led them up to Bala in Judah to collect the sacred ark of God. The ark bore the name of the Lord who rules over everything, and the gold cherubim on its top were recognized as God's throne on earth. They removed the Ark of God from the house of Abinadab, secured it on a new cart and set off down the hill with it. Abinadab's two sons, Ahio and Aza, were at each end, steering the cart which carried the Ark of God. A crowd of Israelite people accompanied them, forming a joyful procession all singing and dancing in honour of the Lord. David led them with great enthusiasm, and they were accompanied by all sorts of musical instruments. They parked the Ark of God in the house of Obed-Edom for a while after an accident, but eventually they were ready to set out again and bring it to the city of David. It was a huge celebration. This time the Ark of God was carried on the shoulders of some chosen men. Each time they had taken six paces, they would stop, and David would sacrifice a bullock and a prime beef yearling. Bare-chested and with only a linen cloth round his waist, David danced with uninhibited joy and great energy to honour the Lord. 
To the sounds of trumpets and loud cheering, David and all the people of Israel brought the Ark of the Lord up into Jerusalem. As they came through the city gates, David's wife, Michelle, was watching from a window. She was the daughter of Saul. And when she saw King David making such a display of himself, leaping around in his dance, she was disgusted. David had set up a special marquee for the sacred Ark of the Lord, and they carried it in and set it in its place. David led the people in worship, offering animal sacrifices to the Lord by burning them on an altar. When the offerings were over, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord who rules over everything. He sent them all on their way with gifts of food. Every man and woman in Israel was given a platter laden with bread, roast beef and fruit cake. So with the celebrations over, everyone headed home. Hear the word of God. We have heard the sound. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Open wide, O oh, you gates eternal, and let the King of glory enter. Open wide, O oh, you gates eternal, and let the King of glory enter. God owns this planet and all its riches. The earth and every creature belong to God. God set the land on top of the seas and anchored it in the deep. Open wide, O oh, you gates eternal, and let the King of glory enter. Who is fit to climb God's mountain and stand in his holy place? Whoever has integrity, not chasing shadows, not living lies. God will bless them. Their savior wing will bring justice. These people learn to see the Lord. They seek the face of Jacob's God. Open wide, O oh, you gates eternal, and let the King of glory enter. Stretch towards heaven, you gates, open high and wide. Let the glorious sovereign enter. Who is this splendid ruler? The Lord of power and might, the conqueror of chaos. Open wide, O oh, you gates eternal, and let the King of glory enter. Stretch towards heaven, you gates, open high and wide, let the glorious sovereign enter. Who is this splendid ruler, the Lord of heaven's mind? This splendid ruler is God. Open wide, O oh, you gates eternal, and let the King of glory enter. A reading from the letter to the Christians in Ephesus. Let us listen for the word of God. Blessed be God. All praise and honour be to the Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ. God has gathered up all the spiritual blessings of heaven and given them to us in our union with Christ. 
This followed on from decisions that God had made even before laying the foundations of the world. Way back then, God was anticipating our arrival and laying down plans for us. God was getting ready to immerse us in divine love so that we would emerge ready, willing and able to get to dedicate our lives totally to God. God set the wheels in motion for us to be adopted as his own children. This was to be done through Jesus Christ, because God takes great delight in doing such things through him. God wanted his beloved son to get all the credit for the boundless love that, that was being lavished on us. Christ paid the ultimate price, shedding his own blood in his endeavour to reclaim us for God's family. Given how often we turned our backs on God, he could easily have given up on us. But he was so extravagant in his love and reckless in his generosity that he just forgave us for everything and put his life on the line to save us. God, who can see and understand perfectly what we could never comprehend, has led us in on the mystery of the divine plan. God took great delight in opening this up and giving us a preview in Christ. This is how it will unfold when the time is right. God will unify all things into one perfect communion in Christ, reconciling everything from the depths of the earth to the farthest reaches of heaven. In Christ, we are identified as God's beneficiaries and our future is secured. God's plan God's plans always find a way, and right from the word go, we have been a part of those plans. This was to ensure that we, being the first people to throw our lot in with Christ, would be able to live lives that clearly reflected the wonderful goodness of God. It didn't stop with us, though. You're in, you're in on this too. The message of God's rescue mission reached you. And once you realised it was fair, Dinkum, and put your trust in Christ, you became part of him, just like us. At that moment, your future was signed and sealed by the Holy Spirit. Now you know it will be delivered. Everything planned for God's people will be yours. A life overflowing with glory and splendour of God. Hear the word of God. We have heard the silent. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us acclaim God's saving justice, attested by the law and the prophets and now revealed through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. Listen now for the gospel, alleluia. It is God's word that changes us, alleluia. The word of truth has lavished on us gifts of grace, the blessings of the Spirit in the heavenly place. Listen now for the gospel, alleluia, it is God's word that changes us, alleluia. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The word was getting around about Jesus. And soon even King Herod had heard what was being said. Everyone had an opinion. Some people thought he was a reincarnation of John the Baptizer and that that explained his miraculous powers. Others were of the view that he was Elijah or one of the great prophets of the past. Herod was backing the John the Baptizer theory. It's John for sure, he said. 
I had his head cut off, but he's come back anyway in more trouble than ever. It had been on Herod's orders that John had been arrested, chained and put in prison in the first place. He had done this at the insistence of Herodias. She had been the wife of Herod's brother Philip, but she had left him and married Herod. She had it in for John because he had been publicly denouncing their relationship as adultery. Although Herodias simmered with murderous rage against John, she couldn't touch him because Herod held him in an almost superstitious awe. He was convinced that John was a unique holy man and he was afraid of what might happen if he didn't protect him. Herod took a perverse pleasure in listening to John speak. Everything John said aggravated him, and yet he kept coming back for more. But it was only a matter of time before Herodias got her chance. On his birthday, Herod threw a huge birthday party, and all the silver tails and top brass were there. Everybody who was anyone in Galilee. Herodias had a very attractive and alluring daughter who came into the party and for the men. Herod and his guests were so mesmerised by her charms that the king said to her, anything you want, I will give you, just ask. He was so entranced by her that he shot his mouth off without think thinking. I swear I will give you whatever you ask, even half my kingdom. The girl went out and consulted her mother. What should I ask for? Herodias had no hesitation. The head of John the Baptizer, she said. Intoxicated by this thought, the girl raced back to the king and placed her order. I want the head of John the Baptizer. I want it served up on a platter right here, right now. That took the wind out of his sails quick smart, but he could hardly go back on his word in front of all his guests. It was Lou's face or save John. Lou's, so he caved in and gave the order. Sorry, it was Lou's face or Lou's John, so he caved in and gave the order. The executioner was sent for and John was dragged out of his cell and beheaded. His head was then carried in on a serving platter and presented to the girl. She in turn gave it to her mother. When the gruesome news reached John's followers, they came and collected his body so that they could give him a decent burial. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you for the Gospel, Alleluia. It is God's word that changes us, Alleluia. Praise to you for the Gospel, Alleluia. It is God's word that changes us. Alleluia. Lest the word life be lost, let us allow God to confront us in the sound of sheer silence. Spirit of comfort and conviction, unclose me of my pride, unweave my thoughts, uncomplicate my heart, and give me surrender that I may welcome the deep silence which stands at the centre of my being like the rock at the heart of our land.
It's rather sobering and depressing to see that on this day, 18 years ago, the opening lines of my sermon were as follows. The horrifying news of a new outbreak of war between Israel and Lebanon has filled the front pages of our papers and sickened us all in the last week. Four Israeli soldiers are captured, and Israel declares that Hezbollah will be made to pay a very, very heavy price, and they back that up with massive airstrikes. That conflict lasted 34 days and saw somewhere around 1,500 people killed. As horrifying as it was, it almost pales into insignificance now in comparison to the current conflict between Israel and Hamas in Gaza, which has now lasted more than nine months and cost at least 40,000 lives. Both conflicts are part of a much longer series of outbreaks in a much longer conflict. The modern nation of Israel was born in trauma and continues to bear the deep scars of that trauma. The Palestinian people are also deeply traumatised. And both sides have continued to exacerbate those traumas by seeking peace only in the elimination or absolute suppression of the other. If ever there was a conflict that showed that no nation can have real peace or security as long as they are denying peace and justice to their neighbours, then this is it. No one is secure while their neighbours are seething with resentment. Most of the victims of this series of conflicts are ordinary men, women and children who were not in any way responsible for the acts of aggression that sparked the flare-ups. But they are the ones who are sacrificed to satisfy the baying for blood that arises so readily when people are scared and passions are aroused. Where is God in all this? How is it that such horrendous conflicts can flare up again and again and God seems powerless to do anything about it? Does Jesus offer any reason for hope in the face of these things? And what can we do? For us as followers of Jesus, attempts to make sense of where God might be in times of such violence and suffering are always going to begin with talking about the cross, the violent lynching and execution of Jesus. But often we run into a problem here because often we have spoken about the death of Jesus in ways that suggest that it is quite unique that it is a one-of-a-kind death, special and unlike any other. And if it's so unique, then it's going to be a bit hard to relate it to other deaths and suffering, isn't it? If it is unique, then by definition it is not like others. But maybe we've got that wrong. Maybe it isn't the way he was killed that makes Jesus unique. And indeed, I think that if we read what Jesus himself has to say about his impending death in the gospel accounts, we will find that he doesn't make any suggestion of it being special or unprecedented. Quite the opposite, in fact. We find him in a number of places making a direct comparison between what has happened to the prophets in the past and what he can see looming ever larger on his own horizon. What will happen to me is just the same as what has happened to many before me, he is saying. His most detailed comparison is found in the parable of the wicked vineyard tenants. The owner sends a series of servants to remind the tenants who the owner is and collect the rent, and each servant is beaten up or killed. Eventually, the owner sends his own son, thinking that surely the tenants will respect his son, but they murder his son just as they did the servants. The message is clear. Jesus sees his own death as one in a long line of similar deaths. Nothing unique in the way it comes about. The story of the death of John the baptizer, which we heard in tonight's gospel reading, 
also appears to be part of drawing this parallel. John was seen as the last of the Hebrew prophets. And why else would his death be included in this way in Mark's account of the story of Jesus? See, Mark has already told us back in chapter 1 that John was dead. Why does he need to tell us again now and with all this gruesome detail? The answer, I think, is that here in the midst of a group of stories teaching us about the discipleship and ministry of those who follow Jesus, it serves to remind us that following Jesus will not put us out of range of the world's hostility and violence, and it might even attract more of it. The story does this not only by where it is placed in relation to the material around it, but by drawing some startling similarities to the crucifixion stories, despite the obvious differences. Both John and Jesus have been arrested because they have exposed the unfaithfulness of powerful leaders. John has exposed the marital unfaithfulness of King Herod and his wife Herodias, whose marriage was built on the adulterous betrayal of Herod's brother. Jesus has exposed the religious unfaithfulness of the Jerusalem temple establishment and shone the, light of the spotlight on their hypocrisy and lack of grace. Both John and Jesus find their fate is in the hands of a ruler who finds them both fascinating and contemptible. Herod hates John, but likes to listen to what he has to say. He is bizarrely drawn to hearing the words that condemn his own evil. There's a fascinating study for psychologists in that one. Pilate regards Jesus as a naive and ridiculous dreamer, but senses that there's something unusual about him and tries hard to get him talking. Both John and Jesus find themselves as the target of an aroused mob baying for blood. Herod's dinner guests, aroused but denied by the dancing of Salome, quickly redirect their arousal into a hunger for the grotesque spectacle of John's severed head on a platter. The crowd in Jerusalem, who had so recently waved palm branches and cheered for Jesus as he arrived in the city, quickly become an angry mob demanding his execution. And the executions of both John and Jesus are authorised by the only leader with the power to do so. But leaders who initially want to spare their lives but find themselves unable to stand against the bloodlust of the inflamed mob. So there are startling parallels all over the place and Mark uses this story to make a similar point to the parable of the wicked tenants in the vineyard. The death of Jesus is of the same type as a long line of deaths, the most recent of which was the death of John. The things that are unique about Jesus are not to do with how he came to be killed. That story is all too familiar. And while Mark has picked up the similarity to the deaths of previous prophets, the door that he has opened allows us to go through and explore the similarities to other victims of violence and death too. And when we do that, we quickly find that the links go off in all directions, both comforting and discomforting. We find that the death of Jesus is indeed of the same type as the deaths of many innocent Palestinian and Israeli people in the current conflict. On each side, there are victims of the enraged mob on the other side and of the decisions of leaders who do not have the courage to stand against the mob's de demand to sacrifice innocent lives for the satisfaction of the wounded honour of the mob. Once we start drawing these lines and making these connections, we begin to see that they go all over the place. We find that the presence of traumatised and impoverished people seeking asylum in our country shines a spotlight on our greed and selfishness. 
And we find our own people easily becoming a frenzied mob and calling for these innocent victims to be sacrificed to re-establish our comfortable sense of who we are and what is ours. So we see that the casting out of Jesus is of the same type as Australia's casting out of asylum seekers or Australia's casting out of its own Indigenous peoples. Or bring it even closer to home. Bring it right into the life of our own congregation, our own relationships with one another, of ourselves. I know myself how easy it can be to start looking for a victim to scapegoat and sacrifice whenever I'm feeling uncertain about myself and under threat of failing and falling on my face. If I feel anxious and guilty about my struggle to live up to some of our covenant commitments, I find a reflex welling up inside of me to take it out on somebody else. I find myself wanting to attack someone who has failed more obviously than me, thus taking out my anger at myself on them. Or I find myself wanting to attack someone who I think has probably done it all much more reliably than me, and I start resenting them and bringing them down in my own mind, and if I'm not careful in public, for having done it in the wrong spirit or with the wrong motives. And at this point, I find that the axis of evil that spills out in the bombs flying back and forth between Palestine and Israel also runs right through the middle of my own heart so strongly that if there was nothing to stop it, I would find myself inciting a mob and baying for blood. And at that moment, I am struck with the awful truth that the victimization of Jesus is of the same type as the victim of victimization of those who I target as my scapegoats. Where are we to find hope in all of this? Is there a way out of this quagmire of scapegoating and violence and death? Yes. In Jesus the Messiah, there is a way out. And in a sense, the rest of our worship service is the conclusion to this sermon, the proclamation of the way of freedom that Jesus opens to us. So just a few hints here, and then I'll let us explore them around the Lord's table. Recognising the solidarity of Jesus with the victims of these various acts of violence and humiliation does act as a confrontation of us when we are in solidarity with the perpetrators. But there are also plenty of times when we find ourselves as the victims. There are times when we find ourselves isolated and misunderstood and unfairly accused and abused. And in those times, we find the suffering Messiah standing in solidarity with us. And the call to us in those experiences is to seek, a, is to, seek to always position ourselves with the victims and to look at all these situations through the eyes of the victim. But, and this is the next step, not just any victim. In Jesus, we have encountered the victim without resentment, the victim who recognises his own murderers as victims, as those caught in the web of hostility and violence and unable to break themselves free. In Jesus, we encounter the victim who is able to pray for the forgiveness of his own killers and who comes back to us raised to life by God as the sacrificial victim whose death exposes the sickness of all our violence, but whose wounded hands are open in welcome and mercy and the absolute absence of resentment or vengefulness. It is only in that experience of grace in surrendering ourselves to that gratuitous forgiveness, that we can find a way free from our own hostility and that the world can begin to be healed of its grievous wounds. 
It is only as we find ourselves anew in that overflowing mercy that we can begin to become part of the solution instead of continuing to be part of the problem. It is only as we begin to reciprocate that love and spread it around that we can find the courage to stop perpetuating the vengeful cycle of declarations that they will pay a very, very heavy price and instead begin to say they will face a very, very awesome outpouring of resilient forgiveness just as we have been saved by grace, by a very, very awesome and resilient outpouring of grace. I'm going to get out of the way now and invite us to affirm our faith and pray for the world and gather at the table where our infinitely merciful host offers himself as a sacrificial victim in solidarity with our brokenness so that we might be fed and nourished for the new life in his wholeness, a life in which vengeance is cast aside and all people are wrapped in the peace and security that comes with grace and love. We have heard the gospel proclaimed. To be able now to live it, we look to Jesus who says, All things are possible to those who believe. We believe, Lord. Help our unbelief. As we declare the common faith of the church, let us sing our way onward into the life of Jesus, the life that lives and loves between the lines. We believe in God, the Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried, he descended to the dead. On the third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen, amen.让我们坚定我们所承认的信仰，因为我们有一位大祭司，他已经升入神的高天尊荣，就是神的儿子耶稣基督。Let us pray for all God's people everywhere and for ourselves in this congregation, that the Holy Spirit may continue to open our hearts and lives to the grace and truth we find in Jesus our Lord. Your will be done, Lord, your love be shown. Your will be done, Lord, your love be shown. que podamos permanecer en la fe y comunión de la única Iglesia Santa, Católica y Apostólica. That we may follow Jesus with strength and calm, trusting God's strength in our own weakness, and showing generosity and selfless care to all. Your will be done, Lord, your love be shown. Your will be done, Lord, your love 
Let us pray for the world and all peoples everywhere, that the world might be healed of its grievous wounds, that wars would cease, poverty, corruption and bigotry be eradicated, and fear, disease and despair be overcome. Your will be done, Lord, your love be shown. Your will be done, Lord, your love be shown. that the vulnerable and underdeveloped nations might receive the aid and expertise they need to survive both old dangers and new, and emerge strong, healthy and free. Your will be done, Lord, your love be shown. Your will be done, Lord, your love be shown. that the powerful and corrupt would be prevented from exploiting the world's current distractions to ransack the earth and prey upon the weak and forgotten. Your will be done, Lord, your love be shown. Your will be done, Lord, your love be shown. That those whose families and communi communities have been torn apart by acts of war, whether legal or criminal, might find justice, peace and healing. Your will be done, Lord, your love be shown. Your will be done, Lord, your love be shown. That we might honour the First Nations of this land seeking justice and re reconciliation together and taking to heart their wisdom for how to live in this land with respect and Your will be done, Lord, your love be shown. Your will be done, Lord, your love be shown. That our nation might confront the sins of its past, dismantle the racism that poisons it still, and build a future grounded in fair treaties, open truth-telling, deep listening, and giving dignity, respect, and a voice to all. Your will be done, Lord, your love be shown. Your will be done, Lord. That the most vulnerable in our society, including those without secure housing or work, those suffering illness, trauma or disability, and those seeking asylum on our shores, might be given welcome, support and hope. Your will be done, Lord, your love be shown, your will be done, Lord, your love be shown. That all whom we carry in our hearts from around the world, around our nation and among our loved ones might be gathered into our prayers. Let us lift up to God the names of those for whom we would especially seek God's care. that we may pray as our Saviour prays. Let us pray the prayer he taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. On earth as in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us. As we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Save us from the time of trial. And deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now and forever. We stand at the threshold of the ultimate feast when all who hunger will be fed and the new wine of justice will be poured. But even now, Christ invites us to his table to taste the first fruits and be nourished for the journey. Whosoever, <clears throat> whosoever will may come, not because you are worthy, nor because any church gives permission, but simply because Jesus offers himself to you and you will want to offer yourself in return. Come, let us prepare the Lord's table, offering the gifts that we are and the gifts that we bring. Bendito seas tú, Dios, Señor de toda la creación, a través de tu bondad, tenemos comunión entre nosotros y con todos quienes esperan en Cristo Jesús. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given, and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. From you flows the river of the water of life. And through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become, become for us our spiritual, spiritual drink. drink. We are the body of Christ. His, His spirit, spirit is with, with us. Let us lift up our hearts. We, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right to give our thanks and, and praise. It is indeed right to give you our thanks and praise, O God. For in Christ you are gathering all things into one communion and adopting us as your, as your own beloved children. Every created thing is yours, for you founded the earth and gave life to all who live on it. Even before that, you chose us and planned for our inclusion into your life of wholeness, holiness, and glorious splendour. With all wisdom and insight, you made known to your people the mystery of your will. Though tyrants have opposed your truth, cutting down your prophets, and crucifying your child, Jesus Christ, you have not left us to death's powers. When you raised Christ from the dead, you opened the ancient gates to us and sealed us with your promised Holy Spirit so that we might enter your resurrection life, leaping and dancing, and receiving every blessing of heaven. Therefore, with the whole realm of nature around us, with earth, sea, and sky, we we'll sing to you. Avec les anges et les archanges qui nous enveloppent, avec tous les saints devant nous et près de nous, avec les frères et sœurs, à l'est et à l'ouest, au nord et au sud. We sing to you. 
we sing the hymn of unending praise. Holy, 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 holy. Blessed are you, O God, who sets the table of creation and invites us to feast with you in cosmic celebration of love and desire. We thank you for Jesus, whose life, prayer and ministry opened our eyes to the glory of life and fueled our hunger for your long-anticipated reign of justice, mercy and peace. We thank you for Christ's passionate solidarity with the suffering of all the earth. For as he bore in his own body the wounds of creation, he embraced us in our brokenness and gathered us into his wholeness so that we might know ourselves beloved and serve with him as priests forever in an all-embracing Eucharist. Blessed is our brother Jesus, bone of our bone and flesh of our flesh, who, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way also the cup, after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it to remember me. So as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. This karanyaha. Ami, Jiwan Lai, Kusi Manau Chonki, Mirtule, Nostra Gorna Saudaina, Yeshule Saj, Gornu Baigo, Jiwan, Sadapti Huruma, Unko, Samudaya Beach, Rajun Oba, Mahale, Ami Sanga, Sajo, Dorilo Gordacha. Habiendo sido hechos uno con él y por tanto entre nosotros mismos, ponemos ante su presencia estos regalos de pan y vino, como señal de nuestro sacrificio de alabanza y de agradecimiento, pues aquí nos presentamos a nosotros mismos, así como nuestros cuerpos, mente y espíritu, para constituir un sacrificio continuo y santo para ti, Señor. Come and brood over these bodily things, this bread and this wine. May they be for us the body and blood of Christ, healing, renewing and making us whole. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come and embrace us with your life-giving power that as bread and wine are made one with us, we may become one with you, bone of your bone, flesh of your flesh. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come and make of your gathered people the real presence of Christ for the world, living our prayer and praying our life till earth and heaven are reconciled, and all are free as Christ is free. Glory be to you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God and Mother of all creation, as in the 
beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Amen. Look, the body of Christ given for the life of the world. Holy things for holy people. Holy one is holy one is Jesus Christ. He is Christ and He alone. All things are made holy to the glory and praise of God. To the glory and praise of God. Let us receive what we are. Let us become what we receive. The, the body, body of Christ. Christ. Jesus, the wellspring of life, invites all who are thirsty to come to him. So come, receive freely. Let us raise our cups as one and taste the first fruits of the coming joy. The blood of Christ keep you in eternal life until he comes. Baba God, in baptism, you connect us with Christ. Come open your house to us. Until bread and wine, you can't give yourself to us. Make we take hold of the and as grace for the road. So then, we go from this place as your people, following Christ in a shared life of faithful commitment to your call. Knowing our own weakness, but trusted in the power of the Holy Spirit, let us offer up the prayer we now go to live. God of the journey, you have called us together to, to walk in all your ways as a, as a community, community of love and, and grace. We are called into communion with God and one another. Though now we part, gather us again into your communion to worship, work and play. We are called to offer ourselves to God and one another. Employing in healing decisions, welcoming all, and shouldering my share of the load. We are called to attend the voice of God. Open me to your word, in scripture, in silence, in stranger and friend. We are called to extend God's hospitality from our table. Fill our eating and drinking with generosity, that we may bring joy to the lonely and hungry. We are caught in unconformity with the world's ways. Strengthen me to face the darkness within myself, 
and to resist all greed, violence, and desecration. We are called to be Jesus' hands. Send me into the world you love, proclaiming and sharing your mercy and peace. We are called to nurture faith and growth. In me and through me, nourish the seeds of grace and bring forth fruits of justice. Attune me to the voice of despair, but let them be dancing to the song of hope. We are called to live thankfully. Cultivate in me a heart of gratitude, looking for your blessings in all things and seeking to be a blessing to all. This is our covenant, the prayer we would live and the life we would pray. Yet only by your grace can we do anything, God, and you alone can hold us when we cannot hold ourselves. To you, glorious and blessed God, be all the glory and honour and the power and the glory and glory and glory and God, Creator, Redeemer and Sustainer, be the glory and praise forever. Amen. The Lord says, Walk in my sight and be old. Make it your first work to love. My presence shall go with you, and I will give you rest. Behold, I am with you every moment, even to the end of the world. Go out and and live lives that glorify God. Act with integrity. Do not sell yourself out of delusions. And give your word to see. Do not sell yourself out of delusions or give yourself deceitfully. Stand up for the truth and rejoice in the Lord. And may God give you all the blessings of heaven. May Christ Jesus gather you into his family and may the Holy Spirit deliver you safely into the rich destiny prepared for God's people. Friends, the Eucharist never ends, it must be lived. We go in peace to love and serve. In the name of Christ, Amen. Amen.